beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and I am so happy to see you today. I hope you guys are doing awesome. I hope you and your loved ones are taking care of the best that you can and I hope that you guys all had a great weekend. It is Monday so we are back at the top of the week and this is the last full week in April. So I'm going to be doing a little crochet and chat with you guys while we hang out today. I'm working on this hat for my hubby that I had told you guys uh, the concept of, but I hadn't started it um, on Friday, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, it was on Friday. So this is all I've got left of this yarn. Very, very little. I'm about to run out. I'm not even 100% sure if I'm going to make it all the way around for this round, but... I'm going to go ahead and start the round um, because I went ahead and grabbed this soft and sleek low pill fiber from Yarn Bee. Uh, it is a four weight yarn also and it is a low pill acrylic um, because I wanted it to be really soft and like low pill um, because the yarn that I'm using for the rest of the hat is this Big Twist Living Anti, 100% Anti-Pilling, Appilling, <laughs> Anti-Pilling Acrylic. Apparently I'm just going to combine words together. Don't got to say acrylic anymore. I'll just say appilling and you guys will know. Um, but this was in the colorway of Authentic. Um, but this hat is a yarn eater. So this is what I've got so far for it. Um, I'm doing front post and back post double crochets for the most part. So the last time that I talked to you guys, I was talking about how I wanted to do, did I just do triples? Yes. Okay. I was talking about how I wanted to do something that would be nice and stretchy because he likes his beanies to be nice and stretchy. What did I do? There's my stitch marker. Um, and usually he wears knit beanies, but he lost his knit beanie, um, the current one that he had been wearing. <laughs> and he loses them. Like I was saying, he loses them like it's going out of style. And I've made him other knit beanies before with my little Centro knitting machine, but it is broken, so I can't make him a knit beanie. So I was like, okay, I'm going to crochet him something because I don't knit. Um, and I wanted to do something that would be really nice and stretchy for him so that he would still like it, you know, cause crochet has a tendency to not be as stretchy. Uh, so what I ended up settling on was a front post and back post double crochet hat, um, which is a yarn eater for sure. So basically I just started out this hat by doing double crochets. Let me show you guys the top of it real quick. So this is how I started it out. I started it out with a um, magic circle, um, a bunch of double crochets, increased in double crochets. And then I believe I did, I think I might have done a front post only round uh, and then switched to front post and back posts. But obviously I was increasing for several rounds. So it looks like a little bit funkier um, as I'm going in the beginning because I was also having to add in stitches that wouldn't be a front post or a back post because they were, they were an increase stitch, if you get what I'm saying. Um, but I think it looks pretty good. And then currently I am just going around keeping the same amount of stitches, doing front post and back post, double crochets. And then these last like four rounds, I actually started alternating, um, doing triple crochets, uh, trip, trip, bleh triple crochet rounds and then doing a double crochet round. So I did um, a triple crochet round and then a double crochet round and then a triple crochet round and then now I'm doing another double crochet. And the reason I did that is I'm not even gonna lie, it's just this hat is working up slower than I wanted it to. And I wanted to get a little bit of height in there because you know, normally when you think of doing like a double crochet hat, you think it's going to work up pretty quick. But if you're doing double crochets, uh, only front post and back post double crochets, they're about the height of a single crochet when all is said and done. Because when you're working in the posts, most of your stitch is actually like in front of or behind the stitch before it. Um, so like, I don't know if you guys are going to really be able to tell. It's kind of difficult to tell because there's also a quite a bit of black in here, but um, 
yeah, you're not really going to be able to tell. Maybe from the inside you'll be able to. I don't know. This is a very thick beanie, by the way. Um, but I did have him test it and see what he's thinking, and he loves it. So that's all that matters. It is definitely stretchy. So it should check that box of, you know, being nice and stretchy for him. And I want to get it done so that he can wear it. Now, I know that it is warming up outside and I do live in Texas. Um, but believe it or not, he kind of just wears a beanie like all the time. Like he wears beanies most of the time. Um, at least in the mornings uh, when he's working. He pretty much always puts a beanie on. And I don't think it's so much for being cold as more just as a comfort item. You know, it's really, really early. Uh, he he leaves at like 4.30 in the morning. Um, it's dark out, you know, like, I think it's just more of a comfort item to put on a beanie. And so he usually wears it in the morning, not necessarily in the afternoon. Um, but right now, for like the last week or so, he lost his beanie, so he hasn't been wearing it. <laughs> Um, he did wear like a different one of my hats one day, but it's not the same, you know, my hats are not like in his color schemes or styles. I don't wear beanies. Uh, I actually am not a huge fan of beanies. I like the way they look, but I don't like wearing them very much personally. I like, I don't like hats that are really tight on my head. Um, I know I talked about this recently, but I prefer like bucket hats, but anyway. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to run out of this yarn soon. It'd be pretty cool if I could make my way all the way around again. I'm about halfway. Here's my stitch marker. It'd be cool if I could make my, make my way all the way around again, just so that I can have a nice solid end to this skein and start with the black. But because there is so much black in this uh, variegated yarn, I really don't think it's going to be a big deal if I switch partially through around because it's just going to be black and it'll just be like a little bit of that round will be black, which is a little bit of this round is already going to be black. So yeah, so I figured I'll just work till the yarn runs out and then switch over. But this does need to be a little bit longer and I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do for a brim on this hat because, you know, a front post and back post alternating. Um, double crochet would actually be a good brim, but that's what I'm already doing. Oh, lovely. Of course, right before I get to the end of the yarn, I'm going to run into one of these manufacturer's knots in here. Let me test how tight this is and trim off some of this fuzz if it's tight enough. But yeah, so I'm like, do I keep doing front post and back post? Um, double crochets for my brim when like that's what I've been doing the whole time or do I want to switch to something else like I could do like half double crochets or something and probably throw in a few increases um, just to make sure that the border doesn't get too tight compared to the rest of the stretchiness um, <clears throat> but yeah I don't know yet or I could just keep it simple stupid <laughs> and continue to do front post and back post double crochets. I will definitely make sure that like, if I do that, um, I want to end <clears throat> on double crochets and probably do a few rounds of double crochets like back post and front post uh, rather than triples because the triples do have more space in them. And I feel like, you know, the part that's on your forehead and stuff, you don't want there to be gaps. Um, so the triples, you know, they're just, they're a longer stitch. So they have more potential for when they're stretched out to have like a little space in between them, if that makes sense. So if I do keep with my current trend, I'll make sure to do probably like the last two rounds at least in doubles, not triples. But that's what I'm currently working on anyways. Let me know down in the comments what you're working on. We are at the last week, last full week of April. 
So I'm trying to get some stuff done. I'm still pushing to get my Gnome of the Month done. Guys, Gnome of the Month is Saturday. So this is also your reminder to send in your gnomes for Gnome of the Month if you would like to participate. Um, I've got some gnomes from like Community Spotlight and I'm gonna try to find those, like ones that you guys have already sent in. Um, but I did mention during Community Spotlight, if you sent in gnomes, if you want to make sure those get in Gnome of the Month, just send me another email with those same pictures, uh, but put Gnome of the Month in the subject line because I want to make sure I don't accidentally miss you. And in the like heat of the moment, it is like so easy for me to forget that uh, somebody sent in something that I've already seen and that's not all bold-faced unopened in my inbox with Gnome of the Month in the subject line. Um, but if you would like to send something in and you've never done it before and you need to know how, um, in the description box below this video and all of my videos, I have my email, which is novanomecreations at gmail.com. And you just send me an email um, with gnome of the month in the subject line. Now in your email, what do you need to include? Well, really not much. Um, I would like you to include whatever you would like to be called. It can be your name, it could be your screen name on YouTube. Uh, if you have a channel, I'm happy to credit your channel. Um, if you want me to put like an Instagram handle or anything, you can. But the reason I specifically ask is actually because, not because you know you might have social media that you want credited, but it's actually because some people have a different name attached to their email than the name that they like to go by on YouTube. So a lot of times people's emails have their full legal name on them because when you make your email account, you put your name in. So then when I get an email, it'll say like, you got this email from John Smith, but you may not go by John Smith on YouTube. You might go by John S or Johnny Appleseed or you know whatever um so you might not want me to credit you as John Smith for one people might not even know who I'm talking about and for two you might not want that information out there so it, it just works better for all of us to make sure that we are happy with the outcome if you let me know even if I know already even if I see you in here a lot even if I know what you go by just put it in there it just makes it so I don't gotta stress when I'm doing my editing to remember what everybody goes by remember to credit people in different ways um, it just makes it easier all around all right well I made it to the end of my round and I actually still have some more yarn so I'm gonna keep going um, but throw that in there, throw Gnome of the Month in the subject line, and then put your pictures in. Uh, you can attach as many as you want. You can send in more than one gnome even if you want to. Um, it does not have to be crochet. So here's what we're looking like so far for the hat. He wants it to go past his ears, so I've still got a pretty significant amount of length, but I'm really digging that. I think that looks pretty dang cool. So I think I can do triples. I can do alternate another triple round in because um, I just did a double crochet. Um, I don't know if you can really tell, but like this one, I think you can tell actually this one was triples because the doubles just are really, really short. So like triples, double, triple, double, because the doubles are like, they overlap. So they don't, um, you don't see them as much. But yeah, sweet. All right, so. Yeah, so anyways, it does not have to be crochet. Uh, it can be anything. So anything you've crafted. Um, obviously, don't send me like some store-bought gnomes. Um, actually, honestly, if you found a really cool gnome at a store and you wanted to send it in, I really wouldn't even care. I wouldn't even be opposed to it. But <laughs> this is for like you making gnomes, okay? So any type of um, craft that you've done, for example, um, we have had diamond painted. Um, Luminant, uh, well, probably not Luminant for, well, I mean, I, I don't think I've gotten any, not that you couldn't do a Luminant gnome, but I don't think I've gotten any, <laughs> um, cross-stitched, um, you could do clay, you could do painted, you know, and literally any type of crafty medium, as long as you made it, you can send it in. And like I said, if you made five gnomes this month and you want to send in all five, go for it. Um, but that's how you participate in Gnome of the Month. So 
we have Gnome of the Month on Saturday this month. Well, I mean, Saturday this week. It's the last Saturday of the month every month that we do like our big reveal and like gnome parade, you know, showing off my gnome and your guys' gnomes. Well, I'm doing a big concept this time and I haven't really told you guys anything about it other than I wanted to go big or go home um and I wanted to make a new mascot gnome that I felt like was more deserving of being the mascot for the channel um I am still working on it and I am going to bust butt to try to get it done for Saturday fingers crossed I don't know if I will, but I'm going to try. I'm going to really try. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But obviously Saturday, uh, you will find out for sure what's going on with it. You know, like I said, I don't want to give away too much. I want it to be a surprise. So I'm not giving away any details. Make sure you tune in for Saturday's video. Speaking of Saturday videos, I have a little announcement. Um, you guys remember how I made my little um, crystal spriggan recently and I had made it for hooker versus hooker, which is a whole thing. I explained it in that video. If you are interested in more info about that, either go watch my other video where I, where it's like the crystal spriggan is like the thumbnail and everything. I'll give you all the info about what I made, all the info about everything about this thing. But otherwise go to Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming or an Alaskan Crafters Jan channels and you can look at their stuff and figure out what it is but basically it's like a little competition that they're doing uh every month I'm not gonna like go into super crazy detail because you know we don't need to sit here sit here for five business days every time I mention it <laughs> but I am going to be participating in next month's so uh April's I just did it as a viewer like I made it because I wanted to participate, but I wasn't actually one of the people participating in the competition. Um, April or May, I'm actually going to be participating. I was actually chosen uh, during the live on Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming on Saturday. Uh, if you want to see that video, then you can head over to her channel um, in the live section of her channel and watch uh, Saturday's video where they drew the names um, for the podcaster, the subscriber, the picker for the colors and the picker for the project. So there's like a lot of involvement if you guys are wanting to get in participating in this. Um, just for funsies, it's not like, you know, you're not winning anything. Um, but you, even as a subscriber, you can do three of those things. You can't do the podcaster one, um, participate or like, you know, like competing as the podcaster, but you can compete as the subscriber or you can pick the colors that are uh, we're doing. We all have to use like the same colors or you can be the person that picks what we're making um but yeah if you want to know more about that definitely check it out uh I think it's super fun and it's a good way to like get involved with the community um you will if you do want to do that and if you guys want to watch me do it you do have uh two live video commitments so um, there's one where we're going to go on and it will probably be, if I had to guess, this weekend, but they haven't picked a day for it yet. I'll let you guys know as soon as I know, um, but they're going to pick a day for that soon where we're going to go live uh, over on Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming. At least this time it alternates uh, every month between those two channels and we're going to find out what the pickers picked and then Mad Mimi uh, or Lala is, as she goes by or a bunch of other things as she goes by, um, Egg Bigger and everything else or uh, whatever, <laughs> Lala, Jan, me as a podcaster and a subscriber, which I can't remember the subscriber's name off top of my head, but we are all going to be making the same thing. Oh, I need to crack my back. Oh, yeah. Did you guys hear that? Ooh, that was, that was a good one. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry, guys. I am, like, a little distracted. Um, 
we are all going to be making the same thing. So for example, for April, uh, I had showed you guys my crystal spriggan, but like the thing was you could make any amigurumi. So like it's specific, but not so specific that like we, we would all have the exact same thing. If you get what I'm saying, like it could be, we have to make a basket. It could be, we have to make an amigurumi, you know? Um, and then the yarn colors are just two to five yarn colors. So it's going to be interesting. I'm honestly kind of scared just because I have absolutely no idea what we're going to be making. Like it could be anything under the sun. And that's like intimidating. Like what if it's something I've never made or that I'm not good at or like, I don't know. But that's the challenge. That's what's going to make it fun too. Um, but yeah, so I'll let you guys know when I know. Um, as far as like, we're going to be on live. So I'll be on live stream over there. Um, while the info is given out and just kind of hanging out. And then in May, towards the end of May, we will do a live stream over there again. And when we do that, you'll get to see what everybody made. I won't be able to show you guys what I made all month, by the way. I can't show you guys what I've made. Um, whatever I'm working on has to say stays top secret until after I have shown it on live for the competition. So once I once I find out what I'm doing, mum's the word. You guys won't hear about it again until the end of the month next month. So pretty cool. Some different things that could be concepts in my mind anyway. I don't know what the pickers are thinking, but we've got a couple different things like next month, like um, Amiguru May is next month, which they just did Amigurumi this this month for their challenge. So I think the chances of them getting Amigurumi again are really slim. I would love it if they got Amigurumi. That is definitely my comfort zone. Um, but like, you know, there's a chance with it being Amiguru May, that person might be like, hey, you guys are doing Amigurumi again. Um, also next month, and actually not even that far into the month, basically like next week is um, May the 4th be with you. So May 4th. So maybe they would do like a Star Wars themed thing. I don't know. I don't even know. I'm not even sure if that's like a theme that they could do. I know that, that so far the themes have been like items, you know. I wonder if the theme could be like Star Wars something. I don't know, but regardless, that's just kind of some things I was thinking about. I was just thinking about plant my crochet plans for next month. And I was like, oh yeah, May the 4th is next week slash next month. Um, I wanna do something for it, but it's gonna come up really quick. Um, so I'm gonna be having that going on. I actually did get chosen for it. And there were other people like, it, it was just uh, out of a hat, you know, or well, out of a cat food or cat treat container, um, picking a name, you know, so it was completely random. And there were other people. And I literally like, you know, I was telling you guys, I signed up for it. If I get chosen, I'll let you know. Well, I got chosen. So I was like, okay, cool. Meant to be. Um, I've got that going on. Gnome of the Month is going to be Saturday. Uh, I am making an impkin. It's actually sitting over here. I want to show it to you guys so bad. Do I show it to you? You know what? I'll show it to you. Okay, so the impkin thing is uh, the year of the impkin. Hashtag the year of the impkin. Um, that is a collaboration going on over on Sam's channel, Mamphis Makes, and Amanda's channel or Panda's channel as a lot of us call her, most of us call her, um, over at, um, Obsessive Crochet Lady. Um, they're doing the Year of the Impkin where they're on their live streams. Uh, Sam does live streams on Saturdays a lot of times and they're picking, uh, every two months they're doing one of the live streams where like everybody votes on the body parts. Um, if you guys haven't seen the uh, Crochet Impkins book by Megan Lapp, it is one of those books um, kind of like her um, Crochet Creatures of Myth and Legends that I've showed you guys a lot and that I made a lot of things out of where you make like 
body parts that are interchangeable and you can make like custom creations. So they'll be like, you know, arms one, arms two, sitting body, standing body, sitting one, sitting two, like different hats, different heads, different ears, different fins and tails and horns and everything else. And then you can like mish and mash them together. And because of that, you can create over a million different options. So I did get the, um, like PDF version of the book. I want to get the physical version still too, but this was faster. And so that's what I'm working from currently. Um, and I'm working on it. It is not done, but I'm loving it. It's so flipping cute. I'm not going to like give you guys super amount of details on this because I do want to do I'm going to do like a whole thing about it. I've been taking video clips and pictures and I'll have info for you about everything that I'm doing, but I just kind of wanted to show you what it's looking like so far, but it is not done. There is more customization stuff I need to do for it. Um there's three more customization options that I need to do for it that are from the book, and you can already see that I've gone a little bit rogue with it and already customized other things from it. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm leaning into my um, Crystal Spriggan concept that I have been so like in love with uh, that I came up with when I was doing the hooker versus hooker. And basically I could turn any ambigurumi into that because the concept is, I actually wrote up a little concept blurb. It is um, small folk who dwell in caves and underground consumed by their obsession to hunt for crystals. Some even possess special abilities that aid uh, in their search. I literally wrote a little blurb and it's like uh, on a little post-it note in front of me. Um, but I love the concept. That's why I fleshed it out more. Um, I'm going to keep playing around with that. I think I would love to just like, I, I think these are such a good opportunity to get like super creative, um, and combine multiple things that I'm interested in. Um, obviously crochet, but also like fantasy, fantasy creatures, fantasy worlds, that type of stuff. And also I love crystals. So it's just like kind of a little um, niche thing, I guess, where it's like combining quite a few interests of mine. Oh, I'm getting really close to the end. Um, wow, yeah, I made it around again about a little more than halfway already. So a lot of this round has been black. A good chunk of it. Um, but I'm also thinking that eventually I might make patterns for um, little crystal spriggans. The first one that I made, which I showed you guys for my hooker versus hooker, but I do have it sitting here, so I'll just show it to you. It's it's uh, meant to be very quirky and silly and whimsical and everything. Um, I wouldn't probably make a pattern for this one just because this isn't like the image in my mind of what a crystal spriggan would be. It's just one crystal spriggan. In my mind, they, they can look all different, you know, ways, all different shapes and sizes and colors. Um, they're going to be quirky and all this stuff. Right now, it's still a concept that's fleshing out in my head. Um, and I made this up literally like I basically had finished the entire body before I even came up with the concept of what I was doing, like the whole crystal spriggan thing. Um, I was just having fun playing around and going like really chaotic with it and like doing weird stuff with the head uh, and everything. But uh, now that I have this concept, I really, really love it. And I want to make more of it because I'm thinking, I don't know, it could be like a really fun like collection, you know, like a really fun thing to collect. I love also just love to collect stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about it. And I think the reason I'm deciding to like really lean into it and play with it is I'm so excited about it. Um you know, sometimes it's easy to like lose that spark for any interest that you're into for a long time, especially when you're like doing something every day. Like, for example, when you're crocheting every day, you know, you get burnt out, um, you lose your crojo, things like that. So when I come across something that I feel that big spark for that I get that like excitement for, I really want to run with it and lean into that and let myself enjoy it because that's the whole point, you know, that's the whole point of crocheting. That's the whole point of 
like hobbies and passions is to like enjoy yourself and uh i'm excited about it i'm i'm really i'm really uh loving the idea so i've got that and then i'm also i haven't really worked on it but i am still working on that thing for um the hashtag mix and match challenge 2024 I believe it is with craftably ever after. Um, but like, I, I know I talked about that recently, so I'm not really going to go into it because I literally just was talking about stuff that I was working on and I haven't worked on it since then. But those are the things that I'm currently working on. And then I'm going to be picking up a, another loop made it to the end. So that is one full skein of this yarn. Didn't even cut any off. Um, but yeah, so what was I saying? Oh, I'm going to be picking up a new hat project because I had a, I had an email request, a request via email, yeah. pulling out the yarn vom vomit, the yarn barf, whatever you want to call it. I don't know why I called it the yarn vomit. I've, I always call it yarn barf, but my brain just went there <laughs> and then I just when I do this I pull this out and then I use this first um this is how I start my center pull usually if unless there's a nice neat center pull I just find the yarn the yarn barf and pull it out um but yeah I got an email about a commission for a bucket hat for like a colorful granny square bucket hat so I'm gonna be working on that and Sometime soon, I want to get a start on um, Christmas projects because we're getting to that like halfway point. It's coming up here pretty soon where we're getting to that like halfway to Christmas point. And obviously, when I say I want to get started on them, I'm not going to start right this minute, but I want to start thinking about it because time really gets away from you. And then I like never can get as much of it done as I want to. So. Right now, I'm just making a magic knot, by the way. If you wondered kind of out of screen what I'm doing, making a magic knot. This thing is amazing. If you're doing something like this, where you're just going to continue as soon as your yarn ends, because this is the overlap I have right now of these colors. And I'm just going to literally cut right up to it because I knotted it really, really good, really, really well. All right, so then you're not wasting your yarn. And it just looks like this. Is that focused for you guys? There you go. Just looks like that. You're not really going to notice it much. And then you don't got to weave in your ends. It's just going to like continue seamlessly. And I literally didn't waste any yarn from this skein. This is literally this, this little yellow right there is all I cut. So like way less waste too. Um, but that's called the magic knot. Um, it might have other names, but that's what I know it as. But yeah, so those are the things I'm working on. Wanting to get this hat done. I should probably do a test test fit. Well, eh. I just remembered I did a test fit right before this round. I was like sitting here like, hmm, it looks like it's gotten a lot bigger. I should do a test fit. I just remembered I literally just did a test fit right before this round. So this will probably be my last triple crochet round. And then I'll probably finish the rest out in double crochet front post back posts alternating. This black yarn is a little bit more black than the other black. This is more of like a true black and the other one was more of a charcoal. So this like cluster right here, you guys can see it's a little bit more of a true black. And then this is more of like a charcoal or a blue black. But that's okay. I don't think it'll be a big deal. And then it'll just have like a nice little brim that's in like a little bit more of a deeper black. But I thought I'd pop on here and say hi, see what you guys have been doing over the weekend, let you guys know about my weekend. Um, 
that I got picked for Hooker versus Hooker. Try to remember if there was anything else that I wanted to mention. Cricket sounds. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. Hopefully you had fun hanging out while we crocheted together or whatever it is that you're doing right now. Feel free to let me know what you were doing while we hung out and I will see you guys again real soon on the next video. I hope that you stay safe and get some time in just for yourself. Um, I hope that you're just doing good. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. And real quick, here's a little update of progress that we made while we were hanging out. And here's what it's looking like with a couple rows so far of the new black double crochets. Bye!